I'm Lori Grace. I'm from TrustVote.org and I'm right here on uh, TrustVote.tv to answer some questions by calling Bob about uh, what's happening with the money on the Jill Stein campaign in the interest of, may of transparency and integrity. So Bob, it's great to talk to you on Skype and I just uh, want to make clear for our audience, uh, I understand you're the attorney for the Jill Stein uh, Recount uh, campaign is that correct? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm of counsel to the Stein campaign regarding the recount. And also, uh, you are the co-chair of the Ohio Green Party. Is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, great. And as uh, let me remind you again that you're also uh, remind our audience again that you're also a fellow with uh, the Institute for American Democracy and Election Integrity. I am indeed. Yeah, also known as TrustVote.org. TrustVote, which yeah. has supported my efforts over the years. Okay, very good. So, um, Bob, I just want to um, uh, say that uh, there are a number of big questions and confusions that have been coming out about Jill Stein's recount campaign. If you're raising money for a recount, it can't go into the candidate's campaign that it has to go into a segregated account to be used only for the recount. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not going into the Green Party, it's not going to Jill Stein, mm -hmm. it's going to a separate, totally separate account, which has its own accounting. Uh, the, in fact, they have to be listed as other expenses and other donations. So anyone who believes somehow this is going to flood the Green Party with money or Jill's going to benefit simply uh, does not understand federal election laws. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, tell me how much can somebody donate? I, I'd like to know. Well, the amount uh, that's allowed into Jill's campaign is 2700 Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, uh, they were going to attempt to use uh, state campaigns where you could have put $10,000. My understanding, they've since withdrawn that option uh, because they didn't want to be reliant on large donations. Uh, basically, uh, the money is going into a Stein recount fund, and you can't give more than $2,700. Although many of the donations that are coming in are $27, uh, I think in honor of the Bernie uh, Sanders and Bernie supporters. I see. So um, George Soros can't fund this more than $2,700, is that right? Uh, if he gives to the Stein campaign, he's limited to $2,700. If his expensive lawyers figure out he could give to a state party another $10,000, but... Uh, uh, no, the, the millions of dollars uh, aren't coming from George Soros. Uh, uh, he would be arrested uh, and criminally charged uh, for money laundering if he was doing that. Oh, wow. Huh. Okay. And um, I recently saw on CNN that, uh, that uh, they said that Wisconsin officials are going to be able to give any overage. I know they're asking for $1.1 and if they're not doing as much... Uh, uh, the costing as much, they're going to give it to the Green Party to help train people on how to be Green Party political candidates. Could you tell me uh, if that accurate? Well, if the Green Party pays more money than the state is required to have, the state is entitled to have all of their employees reimbursed at their salaries and hourly rates. So if the Green Party says gives 1.1 million and it only costs 1 million, then the state by law must give back the hundred thousands. Now that money goes back to the recount fund and can only be disposed of with the permission of the Federal Election Commission. Uh, so if the Green Party might want it in Wisconsin, but they're not entitled to it. It's uh, a Jill Stein recount fund, uh, and who knows, it's not likely to go into the Green campaign. Uh, at best, you could hope for that the FEC tells you to dispose, if there's any money left, 
into a nonprofit uh, that is concerned with election integrity. But I don't think there's going to be any money left. Most of that money will go to the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, uh, and the rest will go to uh, uh, an expensive law firm, uh, which you have to have uh, to litigate against an entire state like Wisconsin or Michigan and Pennsylvania. So I would be surprised if there's any money left, and it's not going to go to enrich the Green Party. I see. Okay. And I know you're her lawyer and you advise her as such. And um, the, um, uh, the other situation is um, uh, this guy, there's this, this person named George Martin in the Wisconsin Green Party that's saying that he's going to be able, that, that their, their party is going to be able to get the overage left from the recount, which I know you say is unlikely, but could you comment on this person, please? Yeah, I, I know George. George's been a long time activist. George is not a lawyer, so, uh, and he's been in Wisconsin a while, so maybe he, uh, it's wishful thinking. Maybe he just doesn't understand uh, the law. Uh, but uh, if that happens, and I doubt it will happen, uh, that usually the FEC will require the money to be returned uh, if there's any left, uh, or uh, will dispense it uh, to a charity. It, it generally does not give recount money back to a party to train candidates or run people for office because it doesn't want to incur unnecessary recounts that take money, time, effort. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so um, uh, I hear it could go to a nonprofit supporting election integrity, and uh, um, it, would any money ever be put towards the, the next state if they're running over or anything? Or? Oh yeah, no, the, the account uh, can uh, roll over to the next state, uh -huh. so that's why I'm saying there's probably not likely to be much left. Mm -hmm. Any overage from Wisconsin would be poured into Michigan, which would be poured into Pennsylvania. Uh, and the reoccurring legal fees, probably a million dollars per state, uh, plus, you know, a million dollars cost. So at this point, you know, uh, I'm not sure they have enough uh, to even cover uh, everything. But right. yes, it's, it's one recount fund, and it's going to be uh, divided between those three mm -hmm. states. Mm -hmm. So all those people that were worrying about this benefiting Jill Stein, I hope they'll uh, rest assured now that it is a commitment to election integrity and this is changing the whole face of the United States and how they treat their elections. Yeah, and again, I would tell people if they're worried about it, go to the Federal Election Commission Advisory, FEC 2006, number 24. Mm -hmm. And that'd be 2006-24, very specific on recount money going for recounts only. Okay, and then I also understand that there's a, a big law firm in New York that's been hired. Could you tell me the name of that law firm? It's Emily Selly Breakerhoff and Abadie. Okay. Uh, and a well-known uh, uh, firm that deals with uh, human rights, civil rights, mm -hmm. and First Amendment issues. All right, well, thank you. This, is, uh, this has been very good. I hope that uh, there'll be some changes on Jill's website. I know that she was trying to initially uh, and kind of nervous about whether she could raise the money and she didn't know if there would be recounts, but I want to really celebrate both her and the American people for taking a step forward to support election integrity and to help create elections they can trust here in the United States. And thank you, Bob, for your critical role in this. And thank you for funding uh, the American Institute there okay. that promotes election integrity and democracy in general. Well, known as trustvote.org. All okay, right. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, All right. so long, Bob. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.